Hi guys. Yeah, me, the croc. Guys, I want to share a story with you uh, about a big bomb. And the whole plan behind the bomb was actually to get to a big box of diamonds. You know, these big diamonds, which go like a million dollar one. Okay, this is how the story went. I was flying a Russian cargo plane, a big cargo plane. Me, my co-pilot, and there was two scientists at the back. Now, our cargo is helicopter parts, engines and things like that. So while we were flying, my co-pilot looked at the cluster of instruments at my right hand side. And he said to me, uh, why is one of these meters in the wrong place? I said, what do you mean it's in the wrong place? He said, that meter, the oil compression meter is supposed to be at the bottom, not in the top side. So these guys who put in the bomb, changed these two meters. They had to take them all out to take the cluster out to put the bomb in. So my co-pilot saw that. I said, that's very strange. But maybe you know how, how these things goes. Maybe it's upgrade, something like that. It's just an oil pressure thing. So he's onto this thing, this co-pilot. I said, man, relax. He said, no, 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 no. And he left his seat. He came straight to my right hand side. And he said to me, hey, Padre, there's something wrong here. I said, what do you mean? He said, something is ticking in here. I said, man, what can tick? Meters doesn't tick. He said, no, a heavy tick. Huh. I put the plane in autopilot. I left my chair and I listened. Man, something was ticking. And we look at each other. You, you can guess. There's a bomb in there. That's for sure. So we could took out the small screwdriver. We opened up that panel fast. Brothers and sisters, there was this huge plastic explosive type of bomb with an old fashioned clock on top of it with detonators. A huge bomb. So if that thing went off, it's going to blow the whole nose part of that plane down. I said to the co-pilot, listen, uh, we need to defuse this thing fast. Luckily for me, I've got background in these type of things. So we removed the detonators, took the clock out. So it's just the bomb stay there, but the bomb cannot explode without the clock and the device which switches off. We were over the sea at that time. So we just threw that de detonated device with the clock out. It's going to drop in the ocean. Ah, we close it up. I said to the co-pilot, you know what? We are in trouble. Why didn't the securities didn't note that nothing with, I mean, everything went so smooth. Who put it in there? Somebody wants to kill us or whatever the case is. So the co-pilot suggests, listen, if we land, we need to come forward with a trick. And the trick is you, with other words, me, need to report to the tower. I'm feeling very sick. I'm dizzy. So. The plan was to take a lot of cloth and build up a dummy, take out my suit, put it on the dummy, and when we land there, one of the scientists is going to carry me out, the dummy out. I'm going to stay in the cockpit, in the top part where the hatch is. So logic, the guys, I'm not going to be satisfied. Why didn't the bomb went off and why didn't the plane crash? So they are going to send the agent in to retrieve the bomb. So that was the plan for me to capture that specific agent. Well, guys, everything went smooth. We land safely and we were four guys inside. Four guys got out and of course I was so-called carried because the spies are all over with their with the binoculars saying, oh, he's going out. So now they can take the phone, contact the agent, Listen, retrieve the bomb. This thing was very high tech actually planned. What I mean, the agent who got there dressed up like a captain, a blonde girl, pretending she is a Russian agent. No, she was in fact the MI agent. Well, anyhow, she got in the plane and she played it fast, man. She started to unscrew that. 
Ha. Well, girl, what you didn't know, I was in the top. I just jumped on top of the girl and I caught her. I said, girl, you're going to explain what on earth is going on here. She said to me it was better for you to be blown up. You complicated this whole issue. I said, yeah, well, you're going to explain to me or I'm going to call the securities so that they can arrest you here. She said, no, 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 wait. I am a MI agent. My superior sent me here to retrieve the bomb with the intent to get the fingerprints of it because they've got an idea where this bomb came from and who orchestrated this whole thing, but they need evidence. I said, oh yeah, well, hmm, the Crocs, I've got a rank. I said, well, it's in my best interest to know what the earth went on here because technically I'm supposed to be dead. I said, I'm going to work with you, girl, with or without authority from whoever. I said, good, I'll help you. So I went out and I said to the security guys, guys, okay, take a break. I'm just going to help uh, the captain and uh, we're just going to take out a computer box. Meantime, it's the bomb, a big bomb, heavy bomb. Well, anyhow, we got out with the bomb. I walk with the so-called captain right through the securities, what, what, what. When we got outside, there was a car parked. We went straight to the car. Of course, it's in my operation. So these guys in the car was quite surprised seeing me with a girl. Huh? She, she shows something to them. It's like a sign. Though the sign means, ah, it's cool. You know, these intelligence rats. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of underground tricks and things like that. Bomb in, bomb out. I said, listen, girl, I want to know who's the guy who put that bomb in because I want that asshole myself because he is the reason why. Mm-hmm, you get that. Good. Now, anyhow, after a week, I got a phone call from this girl and said, listen, when is your next flight, cargo flight? I said, no, over two days. The two days we're going to London and we're going to pick up parts, we're going to take the parts to a, a Australia. Well, when we got in London, I met the girl. So the, the girl uh, organized a big vehicle, one of these station wagon things. I got inside and she said to me, I'm going to share something to you. She opened up a laptop and she showed me a picture of a guy. Now, according to them, this guy is an extremist. Ha! Guess what? I know that. F I nearly said the word, but anyhow, I know that guy's face. I said, this guy is an intelligence guy who were in service in Pakistan with that operation uh, they had with uh, B.L. Steichen and Malev Badia. They were up after a guy there. He was the truck driver, this one. I said, he's not an agent. She said, he's an extremist. I said, well, let's put two and two together. Your record says he is extremist. And I know him from a truck driver. So what's the possibility he's an FBI? There's a good possibility. So you've got information. The twist in the story is, she said, he was the bomb planter because his fingerprints was in that bomb. I said, yeah. Was there any other fingerprints? No, only that guy. So this guy, right, we're on to him. I've got friends and I got friends. I found one of my friends in KGB. We sent him the photograph of this guy. Man, it was not even one minute information back. His address where he works. He was working in Sweden. Well, guys, the MIs and the GRs and the PLCs and the band Sintens is a, a intelligent groups. When there, they captured that guy. Well, I was to on my way to Australia. I landed in Australia. In that time, they captured that guy. So they took him to an underground bunker in London. 
I returned straight to Russia, and just after I landed there, uh, the girl phoned me and said, listen, you need to take a break, you need to come to London. I said, girl, I've got another cargo uh, I need to take to London. You are lucky. Yeah. So that was in 24 hours. 24 hours, cargo on, whoop, there we go with a big plane. London. Got there. Uh, while they were busy unloading it, uh, we've got like 24 hours before we uh, take another cargo and go out. So in that 24 hours, I need to play. Out, I went out. I got the girl. We got to the underground bunker. Guess what? That asshole remembered me. Yeah, when he saw me, he got that face. But you see, something that she made up with this guy. You got this strange tattoo. A very weird tattoo. And I look at the tattoo. I said, this is a Bangai tattoo. It's a group of gangsters, professional gangsters, which are based in Canada. And their big boss, his name is Parvit Zaran. He's a billionaire. I said to myself, listen, uh, what is this is all about? I said, guy, you put a bomb in my fucking plane. I want to know what is the issue. And he started to laugh. He said, of course, it's all about money and wealth. I said, what? So all the MI agents was there. And they said, uh, we, don't you ask the questions. We're going to ask the question. I said, no, wait a minute. The crocs is going to ask him something. I said, the tattoo on your neck. That tattoo. I know that tattoo and I know your boss. Man, and then he got the shivers. He said, it's impossible for me to know. I say, I know. So your boss sent you to put the bomb in. Why? Explain. Man, eventually this guy saw there's no way out because he's going to get killed there. And I, my temper was very, very, very high. I would like to punch him up. You know, to punch him down. He said, no, it's because of a box of diamonds. These one million dollar type of diamonds, the whole box was full of these things. The bomb was exactly timed for the plane uh, to go down in a certain uh, mountain area. So they can retrieve that specific box with the diamonds. Mm -hmm. Well, guys. I'm not in the intelligence world, but these intelligent guys here said, listen, we're going to convert you in a double spy. you going to take us to that big boy undercover. Yep. Guys, it happened. Month after that, we all were in a plane. Canada. Yeah, and a private airport. We landed there, and he made the contact with the big boss. He was secure man, that guy, with a lot of securities and things like that. So, the lie was that the plane exploded and they had the box. Ha ha ha. So, the box was a black box. So, that guy carried the black box in. But in the black box was a big gun. So, now he's a double agent. When he got into there because he's trusted, nobody searched him. And he had a wiretap and we listened to it. He got in there and he talked to the big boss. He said, well, we've got the diamonds. And when he opened the box, he took the gun out. And he took that boss hostage. Yep. How do you like that turn of the story? When he was hostage, uh, he contacted us. Yep. And we just stepped in the place as if. We are guests. Because he said to that big boss, you're going to tell your security, there's nothing wrong here. Because there's only the two in the room. So we came in, we took him out, and we plant a bomb in his back with a detonator. So if he say one word, we're going to blow the bastard up. He was a sissy man. A billionaire was a sissy. We took him out without that security. In a car, in a jet plane, whoop, back to London. Ha 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 mission successful, we got the pig. Guys, you know this world is full of corrupt bastards. But anyhow, this one, yeah, we got him. He was trialed in uh, London. Mm. 
100 years prison sentence. <laughs> Guys, thank you for listening to my story. Appreciate that. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.